All right, so now if it's not empty, which means everything is good, we're going to say post is equal to this data. Now the reason we're assigning it to this is so that we can use the function add slashes so that we can escape any uh, special characters in the post that the user has added before we add them to the database. So that's really all we need. So we need the post. Now, if we go back to uh, our structure here, this is going to give us a clue as to what exactly we need. So we need the user ID, of course. Now, by the time we get here, we know uh, that this user has passed the login test, which means uh, the server, the session has this ID right here. This is what we need. So this is only happening if the user is logged in, which is right here. That's where we're calling the class from. So in order to do that, now session is available everywhere. So it's not a good idea to, I, I can simply come in here. Uh, where is this, the post, I'm in the wrong place. I can simply come in here and say, ID is equal to session uh, like this. Now this is not very good programming uh, practice because if I'm going to reuse this class in a different project, this session, my book, uh, my book user ID is not going to work because I might not have this particular variable in that new project. So to make my code as portable as possible, I have to add the user ID somewhere here. So I'm going to say user ID like that, comma, and data. So I'm passing in two variables, the user ID and the data. So this is much better because I'm going to have to pass in the user ID from here when I call the, uh, the user class or the post class, sorry. When I call this class, I'm going to pass in the user ID. That way, if the user ID changes, I simply have to change it from where I am calling the class from, which is much better. All right, so user ID is there. So I don't need to create it here because it already comes prepackaged. So that's what we need. We need two things. So the post, the user ID. Now we need the post ID. We need to create this one. And then we have no images, so we will ignore that. We have no comments and no likes at this point, so we ignore that. And the other thing we need is the date and whether this has an image or not. So the default value is going to be zero here. So we're going to assume this has no image. We'll be changing this when we start posting images. So the only real things we need here are the post itself, the user ID and the post ID. So to create a post ID, we have to create that random uh, ID generator. So let's, uh, we already created this in a previous episode. So what we would do instead when creating the user, which is the signup. So I'll simply bring the signup class for review. And let me zoom out here a little bit. There's this create user and create a user ID right there. So this is the function, the create user ID. So we're simply going to copy this one and bring it up here and create a new function. Outside this function, we'll create the private. This one is going to be a private function because we're using it inside this class. It's not going to be used outside. So I will zoom in so that you can see the code in case you didn't have it. So there it is, you can post the video and uh, so instead of user ID, we'll change this. We are going to say post ID, just like that. So create post ID. And we're going to call it now from here. Let's go back to the post. Oh, sorry, I actually pasted it in the wrong place. My bad. Too many things open at the same time. This is the user.php class. Uh, we're not supposed to touch this. We are editing the post. Sorry about that. So I'll check the function here and paste it below. So the create and change that to post ID. All right, so now I need to call it up here. 
So the post is this one. And now all I need to do is, uh, let me close. Let me actually close what I'm not using because this leads to confusion. Like I have seen, I've already been confused several times. Okay. So there we go. So the post is equal to the data that we are receiving. And now we need to create the post ID. So say post ID is equal to, now since we are accessing a function that's right here, uh, we have to use this. So I'm going to say this create post ID, something like that. So whatever value we return will be in there. So one, two, and now we need the user ID. So since we have the user ID right here, we don't need to create it here. So the only thing we need to do now is create a query to save in the database. So the query is equal to, now if you remember very well, to insert values, this is the syntax. We say insert into, now we type in the table name, which is posts, posts. So insert, is it actually posts? Oh yeah, the table is posts. So insert into posts, and then you put in your columns, and then you type values, and you put in your values, like that. So that's how the query runs. So the columns that we need right now are post ID, user ID, and post. Only those. And the date will be automatically added. So we're going to say, uh, you can put them in any order, it doesn't matter. User ID, post ID, and post itself, like that. So the only thing that matters, as you can see here, the order is not exactly the same order as here, as long as you mention the ones that you want. The important thing is to make sure the order here is exactly the order there. So let me just simply add uh, the dollar signs to make them uh, variables. So I have the variable post right there, I have the variable post ID right there, and I have the variable user ID defined right here. So since the post is text, I need to put inverted commas, single quotes. I can easily do that for all of them just to be consistent. Okay, so that's the query right there, as simple as that. And then now we call in the DB. Uh, we're going to say DB is equal to new database. And then we're going to say db save. I think that's what we called our function. It's called save. And we'll add the query. Now we don't need uh, to see the result of this. Uh, if it fails, uh, the user will obviously see that because the post will not show up on their profile. So we don't need to show them an error. All right, so it's as simple as that. Save, and we are done. So if nothing else is wrong, let's test this and see what actually happens. So we haven't called this class yet. So this class is called post. So let's go to our profile. So we are checking when this happens, the thing we have to do is create post is equal to new post class, right? And then we're now going to say post. Uh, what's the name of the function again? Create post. Now, don't forget that there are two variables we have to pass in here. So let me simply copy this as it is and paste it here. So post, create post like that. Now, since we are not re, uh, expecting any result, but there could be a, re a result in case there's an error, like please type something to post, so we could put the result thing here. And say result is equal to, I don't need to add this here, so let me zoom in a bit. So create post user ID data. Now these are different variables here. For example, the data is the post variable and then the user id is actually id here because that's the one we are we are using here from the session 
or we can simply grab it from the session itself. But since we already did that at the top here, we said ID, oh, actually this is a different location. So we could redo this if we want to, just to make sure that uh, we are not missing something like that. ID is equal to that one and then add it in there like that, put a semicolon, done. So that should work out. So let's see if um, everything is cool. So to start with, let me refresh that. Okay, and then let me add and say, this is my first post. And then let me hit the post button. Okay, so now we have an error, which is very interesting because I like to debug. So to debug, you check where it's saying uh, where the file is. First of all, the line number is 47 in profile.php. Okay, so let's look at the error. It says fatal error, meaning it can continue. Class posts not found. So on line 47 in profile.php. So errors are not to be feared. They are very uh, interesting things to debug. So let's go to line 47, which is this one, saying this post class not found. Now the reason it's not found is because we haven't added it here. So we have to add it here because we are using it in this page. So this is <clears throat> this class is from the file post.php. Okay. Now in a future video, what we are going to do, as you can see, the number of classes we are adding to specific pages is becoming quite a bit. So there are ways to circumvent this and add simply add one file that will add all the classes that we need. So we'll do that in a later video when we have more experience. But for now, this is fine. So we've added it there and it's going to work now. So let's refresh to send resend the same data again. And now it seems everything is fine. So we won't see our post here just yet. We can only see it in our database. So let's refresh what we have over here. And as you can see, we have our post. So there's a post ID there. There's a user ID of who posted it. And then there's the post itself. There's the date. It has zero comments, zero likes, and it has no image exactly as we wanted. Okay. So to confirm that the user ID wasn't mistaken, we can copy, we can check this number and then go to the users, uh, the users table and see if it actually exists. And sure enough, it exists. All right. So in the next video, we're going to see how to actually display that post that we have created, which won't be a very difficult thing to do since we already have this outline right here. All we have to do is replace, replace the data. So I'll see you in the next video.